Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle that's been inspired by Dr. Michael Penn. And I included his Twitter handle so you can reach him on Twitter. I'm also going to be including the link to the video down below so that you can check it out as well. Okay, let's get started. Three circles with radii 3, 2, and 1 are inscribed in an equilateral triangle as shown. Find the side length for the equilateral triangle. So in the original problem, it was three squares that were in this ratio, 1 to 2 to 3 ratio. And this time we're going to be doing this with circles. And you will see that, that in the comments to the video that um, they were wondering how to do this with circles. So I'm just... I did you just decided to do the video and see how that goes okay so let's get started we have three circles that are inscribed and the triangle is equilateral so one of the things when I first kind of you know came up with this problem I thought about like connecting all the centers right and then I started calculating and then it just doesn't add up right there's a problem with this so you can't just they're not collinear those three points that you see here the centers they're not collinear because you can check that with uh, similarity so let's go ahead and get started so what do we do first we're going to make some connections as always so let's go ahead and do those i'm going to start with the center here drop a perpendicular line and then i'll do the same thing here okay obviously I'm not connecting all three at the same time so that you can see. Uh, and if you do, that's going to be a mistake. Uh, even from this, you can tell that they're not going to be collinear. All right, so I'm going to be connecting the centers here. And then let's see what that takes us to. Okay, so we know that the radii here are three and two. So that gives us a really good idea because what we can do is this is a trapezoid, right? Uh, we can find the length of the height of the trapezoid that's what we need right and how do we do that well by drawing a parallel line here or a segment let's go ahead and do that here and now what does this give us well the difference between three and two is going to be one so this is going to be one and this is going to be a two i don't need this anymore and if you call this length x that's going to be that's going to be this one is going to be x as well and we're going to be getting x squared plus 1 is equal to 5 squared, right, which is 25. From here, we get that x squared is equal to 24, which implies x is equal to 2 root 6. So this length is 2 root 6. So I'm going to be doing the same thing here with the blue and the green. So I'm going to drop a perpendicular here, then connect the centers. Okay. And then... Do the same thing, draw a parallel line. Let me try to hand draw that. And this will be one. This will be a one and this will be a one as well. So here we do have, we do have a right triangle whose hypotenuse is three and one of the legs is one. So if you call this length y, and don't ask me why, then you can just go ahead and write this relationship y squared plus 1 is equal to 3 squared, which is 9, right? And from there, we get y squared is equal to 8, which implies y equals 2 root 2. Okay, so we found x, we found y, and by looking at those two right triangles, you can tell that they're not similar, which means that those three points are not collinear, okay? You may even see that little, little angle there, which is pretty close to a straight angle. Okay, we could even calculate that angle, obviously, right, by using um, trigonometry. Okay, now, what else do we need to do? Well, this is pretty much what we need to do to find the lengths, but what about the other lengths? Well, we're going to find them in an easy way, and let's go ahead and see how that works. Okay, so I'll be making more connections here. Let me start here at the vertex. And let's go ahead and connect that to the center of the largest circle. And then we will make a connection here as well, just to show you what that looks like. And then these are perpendiculars, as you know. And we can do the same thing here in the corner, right? 
and then drop it perpendicular this way. And then now what do we see? Okay, let's see what happens. Well, the triangle is equilateral. And as you know, the two tangents that are drawn from the same point to the circle, they're going to be the same length. They're going to be congruent. So what, if, what does that mean? Well, the angles are going to be congruent too because those triangles are going to be congruent. And this is a 60 degree angle. So they're going to split it up 30, 30. Okay, it doesn't always have to be 50, 50, right? Okay, 30, 30, the same thing here. Then from here, we can actually find the base of this triangle. I'm talking about this one. Okay, how do we find that? We know that the height of the triangle is the radius of the larger circle, which is three. And that's the opposite, the 30 degree angle. So the shorter leg is three. Then the longer leg is going to be, because this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the longer leg is going to be root three times that, which is three root three. Again, you can use trigonometry here if you want you can use tangent 30 which is 1 over root 3 so on and so forth but it'll give you the same thing regardless same thing for the smallest circle we know that the height is 1 so the base is going to be root 3 times that okay so we're almost done what are we going to do next we know x we know y we know these little pieces here and there so what we need to do now is to find the side length for the equilateral because all lengths are equal we just need to add these pieces okay let's go ahead and add those pieces together and let's call the side length of the equilateral a so a is gonna equal 3 root 3 plus x which is 2 root 6 plus y which is 2 root 2 plus root 3 and if you put it all together you're gonna get for the side length of the equilateral triangle you're going to be getting 2 root 6 plus 4 root 3 plus 2 root 2. That's going to be the side length of the equilateral triangle. And I think this is a good point to stop. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Dr. Penn, for the idea. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And see you in the next one. Bye-bye.